Samaritans following him. When they first arrived in India, as you see in this picture, they literally had nothing. They had to overcome insurmountable challenges to build a refugee community. Today, the Central Tibetan Administration is a democratic institution and administers Tibetans in over 30 countries and represents the aspirations of Tibetans inside Tibet. Tibet is of central importance to the Chinese government, and China's policies of control over Tibet emerge from their economic and political interest. China wants complete control over Tibet, but Tibetans inside Tibet have been resisting the brutal repression with waves of uprising, be it in 1959, the late 1980s, and in 2008. All these uprisings have been met with brutal repression and violent crackdown. In 2008, in the lead up to the Beijing Olympics, Tibetans all over Tibet started protesting, and the violent crackdown that followed became a turning point in the history of nonviolent resistance in Tibet. To every family in Tibet had a victim of state violence, yet, Today, there is a new, young, and bold resistance taking place inside Tibet like never before. I want to tell you about one such uh, strategic nonviolent resistance that continues to take place inside Tibet to show how Tibetans deploy strategic nonviolence to make change. Chinese uh, exploitation of Tibetan natural resources has led to protest across Tibet. Since 2009, it is reported that there have been more than 32 large-scale mining-related protests inside Tibet. In 2016, on May 31, around 2,000 Tibetans gathered in front of a sacred mining site called Gonyoklari in Amchok in eastern Tibet. They were protesting against mining on the sacred mountain, and they were calling for the protection of the people, protection of the land, and protection of the environment. This protest was significant, not because the, the mining site was sacred, and not because of the environmental, not only because of the environmental damage, but this is a nomadic area. And mining on such sites would be detrimental to the very existence of these people. Three Tibetans committed self-immolation on this mining site. One of them, Suldrim Gyatso, in his note, cited unbearable agony caused by mining on the sacred land. So whether the Tibetans are protesting in numbers or alone, singing songs, boycotting Chinese goods, keeping their language and identity alive, Tibetans continue to put China's rule to test. Tibetans have time and again proven that nonviolent resistance is not the same as passiveness. Friends, Though much of the world would want to believe that Tibet is a lost cause, given China's rising dominance, I want to tell you all that this is not true. In this room, we have with us Golok Jigme, right here. Golok, when I, I talked about the 2008 uprisings in Tibet, Golok Jigme was in Tibet in 2008, organizing side by side with our brothers and sisters in Tibet. A filmmaker and an activist Golok Jigme was arrested twice by the Chinese government because of his involvement in the Tibetan freedom movement. And all of us thought that he had disappeared. But today he's here with us, Golok Jigmela. Uh, ever since his escape into exile, ever since, his escape into exile, he has been traveling the world, crusading for the cause of Tibet. If Golok Jigme has not given up, we cannot either. Friends, Tibetans in Tibet are finding new ways of resistance, even after 60 years of repression. If Tibetans in Tibet who are risking death and arrest and have not given up, 
we cannot lose hope either. We need to support them with the freedom that's available to us. When Tibetans are using or upholding nonviolence as the core principle underpinning their struggle, we need to support them with action from here in Germany. Our friends have also shown us that change is possible, be it the Solidarność in Poland in Ot and Otpor in Serbia and ICANN for nuclear disarmament. Nonviolence has the potential to make fundamental change. For Tibetans inside and outside Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the national symbol of hope, of our identity, of resistance and resilience. With the blessings of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and treading the path of nonviolence, let us all make a change. Join us. Thank you. Eure Heiligkeit, sehr geehrter Dalai Lama, Sie haben 2011 Ihre politischen Ämter an einen demokratisch gewählten Präsidenten um, Dalai Lama, abgegeben. You um, stopped presidency. Ich sage es noch. Mal. Oh, sorry, I, I say it again. Eure Heiligkeit, Your Holiness, Sie haben im Jahr 2011, year 2011 Ihre politischen Ämter an einen demokratischen Präsidenten. You gave your political Präsident office to a democratically elected president, but of course, still today, for the Tibetan people and for many people in the world, you are the spiritual leader. So these are the facts. And then I was sitting at home in front of my computer and I thought, what else should I tell you about the Dalai Lama? It would be too short, too banal, to anything. Und ich hatte die ganze Zeit and then, all of the time, I had one particular idea in my mind Mann, of another great personality who once said, non-violence is a weapon of the strong, Mahatma Gandhi. Und ich glaube, viel mehr muss man gar nicht sagen, and you need um to say Lama more to welcome Dalai Lama, and we just do it again, together, officially. Welcome to Germany and in welcome in Darmstadt. Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama. Und jetzt freuen wir uns sehr auf Ihre Worte. Dear brothers and sisters, and a special respected brother and sister. <laughs> Indeed, uh, I feel great honor to participate within this as a conference. This itself shows uh, on this planet a lot of people now really uh, fed up about violence. So the desire for peace is, I think, uh, year by year increasing. There is actually a non-violent way of approach. It's a realistic approach. I think firstly, human being, as some scientists say, basic human nature is more compassionate. And then, in the past several centuries, among human beings, among different countries, even within one country, uh, see, including civil war, immense violence. But this immense violence 
What kind of positive result come from this violence? Oh, nothing. More hatred here. Through violence, one body defeat or destroy it. Physically, they destroy it or defeat. But emotionally, some different uh, sort of negative emotions remain there. So violence, counter-violence, no end. So now, Europeans realize, you see, the violence, violent method is not the right method. Uh, so think, uh, common interest, broader mind. After Second World War, European Union start. I often telling people, First World War, Second World War, France and German arch enemy. One of my uh, great friend, and as a matter of fact, almost my tutor of quantum physics, late von Wetzika. In 1990s, then his his age also in 90s, so he told me when he was as a young German, the every French eye German is their enemy. Uh, similarly, German eye French is their enemy. That kind of attitude completely changed. He told me. So, European Union start. This also, I think people get deeper experience. Uh, violence is outdated. Now, violence very much depends on the strong concept of we and they. Then fight, come. Then, they consider the, all your neighbors uh, same as the part of your own community. So European Union started. So I always telling people because European Union developed within member state at least the last few decades, no danger of quarrel, killing. If uh, European Union not develop, then within the last few decades, I think in German people also then may kill someone, <laughs> and Polish also. <laughs> but, you know, people become more mature. So the non-violent method is the only way. So I feel now it is very, very possible the early part of 20th century, later part of 20th century, I think human thinking much changed. And then my elder uh, brother here, the solid movement, solidarity movement in Poland. You mentioned about 200 Russian soldier, 200,000 Russian soldier there, uh, but you you see, they determined to fight against aggression or violence, then non-violent movement, solidarity. One, once you mentioned to me your experience. <laughs> so, so these things, I think, a clear indication at least people in this continent, European continent, I think a lot of suffering through war, through violence, now become more mature. They realize nonviolent method is the only thing and think about common interest. So I pray 
I wish Russia should join the <laughs> European Union. So, I always is telling, expressing the same spirit, European Union should uh, sort of a kind of union should start in Latin America and Africa. Africa, too big. Maybe first Northern Africa, then Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa. Uh, eventually, whole world, like the United Nations. The United Nations is the sort of the body or representative of government. Now, I think some kind of people sort of uh, some kind of or is the, uh, body there. So eventually, I think our goal or alternative, I think whole world should be one union. It is possible. It is possible. You see, what my dream is Asia, India itself. Actually, Union, East India, South India, West India, North India, Central India, different language, different language, different script, but remain happily within one union. This is one example. The China, also you see the, the Chinese word Kung Ho Ko, union. So eventually, I think, I think this moment, I think my sort of, my thinking is just empty dream. Eventually, I think India, China, Japan should unite it. Possible, possible. So therefore, the union is very much sort of based on concept of non-violence. I think this century, I think, uh, I always is telling, this century should be, this century should be century of dialogue. That means whenever we find some disagreement, different interest, solving that through dialogue, not through weapon. So this 21st century should be century of dialogue. It's possible. So in order to reach that, firstly, de denuclearization, what call? Oh, very important. One occasion, Nobel Peace Nobel Laureate meeting, originally in South Africa, but then South African government feel little difficulties, so then whole menu shift to Rome, and a few Nobel Laureate. And then, you see, talk there how to create a free nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon. Ka. Uh, free world. So at that, that time, I express now we uh, should, so, should make some kind of time fix within two years, three years, this world free nuclear weapon. So some kind of time fix I necessary, I express. But no, nothing happened. <laughs> My reason, reason is just a free nuclear weapon, free nuclear weapon, sound very nice, but may not be very sort of effective. So some Nobel laureate meeting, you see, uh, made one sort of uh, fixed way. 
uh, timetable. And then worldwide movement. I think uh, then eventually uh, can achieve. Then demilitarize on the offensive weapon. Then gradually even defensive weapon also I think should el eliminate. So this world, in order to achieve non-violent world, peaceful world, I think world our aim should be eventually demilitarize the world, step by step, in order to achieve. <laughs> demilitarize two things, physical level, demilitarize. Then, in order to achieve that internal disarmament, that's our anger frustration, uh, jealousy, too much greed, these should reduce. So that, I think, as already mentioned, is the union, union, very helpful. So external disarmament, internal disarmament must go together. Internal disarmament through education. You know, now, the more compassionate mind here. You want physical health better. And brings smile. Isn't it? I think people love smile. People do not love <laughs> like that, that face. I usually ask, you see, when I met some student, do you prefer smile or the more serious face? They always they say smile. True. Even dogs, if we show smile, affection, they also, then, you see, they are tail. Hmm? They have no language, but you see, they tail indicate uh, sort of affection. You're feeding uh, some food, what does it mean? With a serious face. Even these dogs also, you see, uh, not very happy. Take some food, and then go away. <laughs> <laughs> so, this because these, I mean, the people, the, the species of mammal, social animal, biologically, they have the equipped sense of concern of others' well being, compassionate attitude, because that brings together. So each individual social animal, their, their survival depends on the rest of the community. So we are a social animal. Each individual's future depends on the community. Now community, whole world, one community. So seven billion human beings is actually one community. So thinking this line, then gradually we can develop, uh, respect others' right. Uh, with that, even some small different views, different interests, uh, you can easily share these differences, how to achieve mutually equitable solution. So we need strength, confidence here, nonviolent, and firstly, Respect others' right. Consider as a brother, sisters. Whether we like it or not, we have to live side by side on this planet. We cannot. So Europe, European nation, you see, your future depends. Uh, what's the day? Uh, 